So this is um, thanks for everyone for coming and for David and and everyone for helping me put this together. I'm looking forward to your feedback and I want this to be interactive. So to kick things off, let me start by making the case that research should be evaluated publicly, independently of journals or 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 where it's published and using quantifiable ratings. Then I'll give you an overview of what we're doing at the UnJournal, our thinking behind it and our progress, and then our, ch our challenges that I want to get your feedback on and how you can get involved. Uh, all these notes will be shared. So um, what's the basic case? Okay. We've had information technology for quite some time, and we can all make wonderful presentations and share them. We don't need to be tied into journals anymore, but have we lived up to the promise of our technology? So we can make beautiful, living, transparent formats. Almost all of us can do so and communicate these and give anonymous or public feedback almost instantly and aggregate that feedback. Uh, but, and we have working paper archives. We have institutions that are meant to free us from the traditional journal monopolies over dissemination and curation, but we still have not been able to unlock these benefits, which I'll get to in a moment, which I'll highlight what I think the benefits are in a moment, because evaluation, credibility, and career capital are locked into the journals. So reading from the Department of Economics at Bonds, tenure track criteria, the following currently describe an average successful candidate, at least one article published in a top five journal interest journal in economics, number of published articles in top field journals, and maybe further articles in lower ranked journals. So we're still locked in a certain sense to this ranking of journals for valuing output, for valuing careers, et cetera. This is us being locked in. So the old system built on printed journals, bending over, I remember back in graduate school, bending over copy machines or trying to bend the the um, journals over the copy machine spend a lot of time to print out articles that I wouldn't actually read. But these imposed a natural filter, access to the scarce resource of space in a printed journal. Uh, but I argue we've relied on this as the default filter for too long. Yes, filters are needed or things to help you filter and to, and to judge or to, to assess the value of things, but we can do better. I claim that credible journal independent, credible journal independent, public quantified evaluation could unleash a range of benefits. So open access is one. There's billions of dollars in rents taken by um, uh, for-profit corporations like Elsevier. But more importantly, this paywalls and the subscription fees lock out researchers from the global south and also lock out uh, the ability to collaborate on open research that is shared in a public place uh, to do things that could enable better replication, automated checking, reuse, and meta-analysis. It also um, limits the extent to which we can do evaluation across the research life cycle. We can only evaluate the final printed uh, paper, what journal it gets into, which limits the incent, which gives people incentives to just focus on that rather than evaluating pre-registration pre plans and the plans for the research and the replicability and the extent to which the, the findings are sort of supported and replicated um, and made useful. But also, and by the way, one, one example of that is the OSF is now putting together something called life cycle assessment. You can have a look at the Center for Open Science, uh, Open Science Foundation interface. Um, so I see research as being a living thing that you can improve as you get better techniques, better data, better approaches. You don't have to pretend it's a new paper to be able to do anything and get any rewards for it. We're also supporting replication initiative like the Institute for Replication by evaluating research early in the process and having suggestions for what things should be tested more carefully, what things need robustness checking. Okay, but then there's three other benefits I wanna mention. One of which is the ability to have evaluated, share, publish, use dynamic and transparent formats to get at the robustness of work, 
with a so-called um, multiverse analysis or dashboards that people can go through and say, well, is this robust to these assumptions that I would have made? Journals don't really do that very well. They don't really encourage that. This would be thousands of pages in an online appendix, PDF, if you, if you like. Interaction conveys a lot, again, if we can evaluate things in any format independently of journals, we can use any formats. This is from distill.pub, uh, machine learning uh, jur online journal, which was, was really cool. I would, I would suggest checking it out. And of course, dynamic documents. I think these should be the main format and output. Quarto, Jupyter notebooks, enabling checking, replication, precise understanding. I can see exactly what, what created this graph. Journals don't really encourage this, but we can all make these things. And if this was the thing that got evaluated, researchers would do. Um, you know, you can check out whatever part you like. You can have, a, ex, if you want to learn more, you can have explanations. If you didn't understand this concept, well, just open this box. Can't really do that in journals. Now, something the unjournal is trying to do is more precise assessment. So, in economics, we have the top five journals people seem to know about, but you know, some things seem to get lucky. Other things seem to be unfortunate. People are in a rush. Maybe they don't get into the top five, but there's they don't get into a top field journal because there's no top field journal in their field. It's a complicated landscape. The only thing people learn about the quality or the reliability or the usefulness of the research is what journal it got into through some quirk. We can do better than this by simply rating things, giving evaluations. And this is what the UnJournal is trying to do and others are trying to do as well. So we ask people to rank the, this research overall and in certain area and certain criteria relative to a uh, reference group, okay? And also to give credible intervals for your percentile ranking. We also ask for a known currency ranking because people might be less familiar with this. We want our evaluations to be comparable to what people are used to thinking about, which is journal tiers. So we also ask for rankings along the journal tiers. You can test out our current system. It's still, we're still working on a little of the UI. I mean, we're using it, but it, it could be improved in some ways. Can also give multidimensional assessment. Research may have more than one attribute that is worth assessing. And this is particularly useful to policymakers, fund funders, and meta-analysts. They some people care about the extent to which that research um contributes to the field and helps build the field. Other people might simply care about, well, can I trust this research? How much can I believe it? How much should I update my beliefs based on this research? We give at the UnJournal six different categories people can express their beliefs or their, their ratings over. And you can see that on our dashboard of the evaluations we've done so far, according to these six categories plus overall. And we're still working on which categories to, to the, the question of, you know, how we identified the categories well. I'd love your feedback on that. And also making these evaluations public adds a lot of value too. Um, it makes standards more trans clear and more transparent. It fosters discussion. It enhances trust and understanding. It helps other researchers. Um, it helps researchers learn. And it gets us away from this idea that, that, that what matters is taste of sort of elites or what is hot right now. It puts this out in open where all of our, our evaluations and other groups doing public evaluation are made public for people to and, and evaluators can respond as well. And what I think is the largest benefit is simply the process as it is now takes up a huge amount of resources which aren't completely aligned with making better research, with improving the research. A lot of what economists, I know from economists, but other fields I'm sure as well, talk about is who got into what journal and how, and who's the editor of that journal, and what stuff do they like, and where should I submit to next? Um, and it take, can take many years, and to, to the, this binary system of rinse and repeat um, doesn't necessarily, I mean, of course, more scrutiny makes the research better, but this isn't the best way to do it. We, incent we can incentivize academics to do this journal shopping ad nauseum, or we can do something better that would hopefully help them improve their, spend more time doing better research, make the research and its quality known to users more quickly. And of course, it's it's pretty straightforward. Just have people share their research, as in many fields like economics that already do. Um, a list, have systems where people can get prompt, credible, and public evaluation 
then they can get the career awards as well as conveying the value of the research to people who might want to use it. At, even if it takes a few months to get that credible evaluation, it's better than getting rejected, having to submit to another journal, getting revised and resubmit, failing that, et cetera, et cetera. It's a one-off thing. And then also, you can then say, okay, I want to improve the research. There are all these good suggestions, new techniques, new data. I can do better. I can you know, respond to these criticisms, and I don't have to pretend it's a new paper and have five different papers saying the same thing. Okay, the initiatives that are out there, there's quite a few. We're doing something a bit different than the other initiatives, I, I claim. Um, David, am I on time, by the way? Am I okay? Uh, yeah, we will have okay. some few minutes for the okay. Uh, price. Program. Okay. Um, so there's eLife. They mostly these initiatives are mostly focused on the on the life sciences. There's pre-review. -pre there's pub here. There's PCI. We're doing something in a different area. We're focused on economics, social science, policy, and we're taking a bit of a different approach. We're putting a lot of incentives, using a lot of incentives, bringing in new resources. New forms of organization where, you know, using many things from the old system of we're having evaluation managers, asking them to uh, find a commission experts to do the evaluations um, who have expertise in the particular field. We're paying people, which is which is unusual. And we're quantifying uh, these evaluations in ways that I've mentioned and, and we'll get into a little bit more. So here's what we do. Researchers submit work. Or we select publicly hosted work, particularly work in distinguished, pre uh, prestigious working paper series like the National, National Bureau of Economics Research, as well as published but under-evaluated, or peer, even peer-reviewed published but under-evaluated work. Then our team, we have a field specialist, uh, team of field specialists in management in different areas. We basically vote on what of this research that we found, that others have suggested, that others have submitted, we should prioritize for paying people to evaluate. And we have a systematic vote. You can sort of see it. Uh, people, we have people specifically writing up what, why they think we should, and then we take a vote on it. Then evaluation managers commission, uh, and we pay expert evaluators, which is pretty unusual to pay people. That can help us ask for quality and help us ask for promptness. I think it lends seriousness to this effort. Uh, we pay about $500 on average compensation, including a large incentive and promptness component. Now, we don't publish anything, or we do publish some things, but we don't publish research. We link publicly hosted research in any format, ideally, that can get a DOI, so it can enter the bibliometrics, etc. Authors, we're not asking people to jump off a bridge, we're asking, or, or to jump off, to jump off a bridge, we're asking people to cross a bridge or to yeah, we're making it, we're built, we're building a bridge. You can submit to the unjournal as well as to traditional journals. Um, because we're not the ones claiming ownership of the research, but we're what we're publishing is the evaluation packages, the evaluations, the ratings, the author's responses, a synthesis, and trying to make that as prominent as possible so it's out there in the ecosystem, people can't ignore it. The fact that we also allow, encourage, let people submit to traditional journals which is a system we're trying to ultimately replace. But for now, we think people will do that. It's only natural. Allows us to benchmark our ratings against the actual pub or the, out the outcomes in traditional publications. So here's a complicated spaghetti map of our workflow. Work comes in through a few, through a few modes, submissions, prioritizations. We have rules for when we need to ask authors for permission and when we just do the evaluation, but keep them in the loop. Hopefully they engage, assigning evaluation managers, assigning evaluators, um, communications between the authors, the evaluators, the evaluation managers, you know, some, some guidance, and then ultimately putting it out with DOIs and making it, again, as, as public as possible. As well as, as I said, we elicit quantifiable ratings and we benchmark existing measures, such as what journal do you think this, what tier of journal, and we define a set of tiers and give some examples, do you think this work should be published in and where will it be published in? So both a prediction and a normative assessment. We emphasize transparency. We emphasize rigor. We have a transparent process and we emphasize rigor, robustness, communication over novelty and cleverness. We're focusing on globally impactful work in economics and social science. Um, and yeah, you see, you know, you, we also have this, this data interface. You can see 
what we've done so far and how people have rated the work in terms of where they predicted it would uh, be published or should be published in terms of a tier. We also, of course, ask people to discuss and give basically a detailed referee report, as you might call it, although we don't have an up or down, accept, reject thing. The goal is that authors, referees, and funders will see this before and after the paper is potentially accepting a traditional journal and know that other people will see this. So people will begin to start, know that they need to take this seriously, because if People who are going to be evaluating my reviewing my paper for the journal I want to get into later will see an evaluation. Well, that might be influential. So I might better care what that evaluation is saying. Here's how you see how we display some of our out, some of our output, some of the ratings, and and also the content in at uh, unjournal.pubpub.org, which is passing to Google Scholar and other places. We're working on that connection, but it's it's being happening. Okay, our pipeline and our progress. We are targeting 70 papers in addition to the 10 we did as a part of our pilot or evaluation packages. Uh, we have, uh, we've done a few since the, the pilot and we have 22 in progress being evaluated, another 80 in prioritization. But mainly we've been focusing a lot on building systems to make this doable, to make this doable at scale and organized, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we built a knowledge base. You can ask questions about what the UnJournal does, a data dashboard. Uh, we're working on, we have a PubHub Pub host. We're working on the process of evaluation management systems to automate things, reminders, et cetera. I showed you the prioritization database and we're forming links with Knowledge Futures, COS. Okay, effective thesis, et cetera, pre-review, IGDOR, bits, and we're expanding our team. We have a, a management team, bring, bringing two people to that team. An advisory board, including some of the people here who will be speaking. And we have field specialist teams in various in several areas that we're prioritizing, as well as 125 people in the evaluator pool, over half of which are economists, over half of which have doctorates. We can reach outside that pool. These are just people that said we're interested in doing evaluations and being paid for. Our main uh, challenges I'll discuss in the breakouts are this is a collective action plan. A lot of people say great ideas, this would be great, but I'm not gonna be the one to step out and do it. We're trying to change that equation, incentivize people to be early adopters and to fear missing out on this. And there's, I'll discuss that in the, the discussion breakout, as well as being able to establish that we provide credibility and value, particularly through the structured evaluation metrics in a way that can be comparable, that people can say, okay, I know how to eat this. I know I can trust. Uh, and eva evaluation ratings moderated by the owner. Okay, so that's um, basically it. If you'd like to get involved, here's some ways I'd love to have people get involved, help us solve the collection problem, take visible steps to join this system, spread the word, consider submitting your research, join our team, join our evaluator pool, our management team, field specialist, um, give us feedback on what we're doing so we can get better at it and take our evaluation seriously or at least consider taking them seriously and let us know how that's going. Okay.